This is the free motion quilting tutorial for Echo Feather. This video is a part of the free motion quilting project created by Leah Day. Learn more about this design on the project at freemotionproject.com. Now let's get back to Echo Feather. To quilt this design you're going to start with a long curving flowing stem. Just a single line then come to a point and then echo that line all the way back to your starting point. You can make this line as wide as you like. If it's really skinny or a single line, it's not going to show off nearly as much as if you make it wider or if you stitch things inside of it. You could even stitch circles inside of the line to make it more interesting. Now the second step is to branch off with your feathers. The way I like to stitch feathers is to stitch the feather shape and then bounce and travel stitch along the feather to create the next feather. I just simply find that it really helps to be able to build up the stitching that way and uh, you know it really seems to flow better in my opinion. But everyone has a different way of stitching feathers so feel free to experiment and try it out for yourself. Now I travel stitch all the way back to the beginning to branch out with the second set of feathers and notice that I'm not taking these feathers to the edges of my quilting space. I'm instead keeping them small and not branching out as far as I could because this is going to be an echo feather. I'm stitching the feathers first and then we're going to go around the outer edge and echo around each feather. It's going to build up the texture and make it stand out a lot more on the surface of your quilt. Now let's start the second part of the design. I just simply stitched up with my feathers, interconnected it with the first, and now what I'm doing is simply going in between each feather and bouncing up and around. I'm connecting with that point where the feathers touch right there at the tip. And this is really important to pay attention to because there's really two ways that you can do this. You can stitch your echo to come down and touch those points and the nice thing is with this style is that you can stop with your needle in the down position in all of those places. It kind of gives you a place to rest. You can rotate your quilt, get a better direction, be able to see what you're doing a little easier. The other type of echoing is a non-connecting echo so that instead of coming in and bouncing like that you would be staying away from the design at all times. Um, you would be keeping that perfect quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch distance between the lines of stitching. It's a little bit different, both ways look different, but the cool thing is is that uh, whichever echo style that you choose, it's always going to draw more attention to the feather, it's always going to make the entire feather shape stand out better on the surface of your quilt. You can see right here what it looks like when you have about three rows of echoes around each feather and they stand out nicely. You could leave it right here and the feather, entire feather motif is going to stand out better. Or you can just simply continue to expand your echoes until the entire quilting space is filled. It's up to you, really, how you stitch your feathers and where you take them. It's worth playing with these designs. I'll admit, I wasn't good at stitching feathers when I started the Free Motion Quilting Project. I hated them. They were very, very difficult for me to stitch nicely. But the more practice and patience you throw at it, the better it will get. I promise. Here's what it looks like whenever you finish Echo Feather. Find over 300 videos on free motion quilting plus many tools and supplies to make this easier on your home sewing machine at freemotionproject.com.